This week I was working in our garden, an outdoor dining area at the new house, and we've never had a garden. So I've been enjoying it, though I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, but I really wanted to prioritize the dining area because it's finally warmer out and we want to have barbecues out there and enjoy the longer days during the summer. And that really wouldn't be as enjoyable without a great night's sleep. We have the softest, most luxurious sheets from Bowl and & Branch, and I've been raving about them to everyone that I can. I even told Drew about them and he was like, oh yeah, I already have them. <laughs> And I shouldn't be surprised either because he has great taste and Bold and Branch has over 10,000 raving reviews on their bedding. Sleep better at night with Bold and Branch sheets. Get 15% off your first order when you use promo code two hands at bowlandbranch.com. That's bowl and branch, B O L L A N D branch.com. Promo code two hands. Exclusions apply and see site for details. Thank you to Bold and Branch for sponsoring this episode. So before I started sharing my renovation projects online and started my own YouTube channel, I actually designed websites for small businesses and other content creators. I know I don't talk about it a lot, but I did that. <laughs> I found that Squarespace was the best platform to use to create beautiful websites so my clients could build their brand and sell their products online, so much so that I built my own website, exomckenna.com on Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com slash XO for a free trial so you can check out all the features and start building the way you want your website to look. And then when you're ready to launch your website, use offer code XO to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. I like having what I call a capsule collection for my clothing, which is classic quality basics that I can mix and match to create tons of different outfits, but it can be really hard to find high quality clothing, especially basics at an affordable price. And a friend of mine was wearing this beautiful, like simple silky dress. And she told me that she got it from Quince. So I immediately took a look at their website and quickly noticed that they have really high quality fabrics like Mongolian cashmere and mulberry silk, but their prices were incredibly affordable. And I just got their washable silk dress in black and I love how soft it is. And I also got their Mongolian cashmere tee, which is the perfect like wardrobe staple for year round. Shop with Quince today and discover the affordable luxury you deserve. Right now, go to quince.com slash XO to get free shipping and 360 65 day returns on your next order. That's quince.com slash XO for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash XO. Thank you to Quince for sponsoring today's episode. Hello guys. Welcome back to with my own two hands podcast. I have a very special guest. This is my first guest since my mom. Well, my mom has been my only guest. Drew is here mom. from Lone Fox Home. Hi, guys. It's me. <laughs> How are you? It's, I'm good. McKenna. Like, I don't oh my gosh. know because we hang out all the time. <laughs> and we only did set up this podcast for two hours before. So, yeah, we had a little, <laughs> we had some technical difficulties. But I've uh, learned so much already about a podcast. I see. I didn't know all of this went into it. I've never, ever done a podcast ever. I've been asked actually to do a couple, but. I don't know. I I almost I honestly feel like if I was to do a podcast, I'd want to do it with someone that I like want to talk to, you know? Yeah. Like not that I didn't want to talk to other people, but just kind of scary. Yeah. I never know what they're gonna like people are gonna ask. I think that's why I do it with my mom because yeah. I'm like so comfortable. And then with you, like we're we've been friends for years. Yeah. So it's like it's comfortable to like I just oh, let's chit just chat. Sit, sit yeah. down and like chat. And all. we both got how we just both bought houses. So that's so really cool. what spawned this episode. Yeah. So if you Drew and I have been friends since 2019 2018 yeah. maybe no 2019 Since like the beginning of our channels kind yeah of. like we both had a very similar kind of subscriber count i mean i had yeah. i had a little bit more, more than you yeah. when we started i think i had he's like he's being modest he definitely had more uh, <laughs> no i think i had like 300 and you had like 150 or something yeah. like and that's when we found each other around then so smaller channel and then i forget yeah. which where was i living i was at the apartment over you were just right over down. You're down, down the way. He's always <laughs> lived right around me. This like, area that I'm in right now. Yeah. I've lived in this area for a long time. And when you were looking for houses, you wanted to be in this area or you looked all over? 
Um, I actually, like, I was looking everywhere. Actually, where you just bought your house, yeah. I was looking over there. I really wanted to live there. That was one of the main areas I was looking in. It is pretty nice. I gotta admit. It is a pretty good area. I love it. I was looking really all the way from, like, Encino all the way to where I'm at right now. Yeah. So, like, kind of, like, a big, broad range because I was open to, like, living wherever and yeah. then just, you know, like, traveling to and from if I had to go to stores or whatever it was. But I did know that I loved this area, so I was really open to this area as yeah. well. So when I was, like, looking, I'd constantly look in this area. Oh, that's yeah. so fun. So we, we've we known each other for a really long time, yeah. and we have – Similar passions, if you will. We do. <laughs> we similarly like the same things. We yeah. Home decor. Mm -hmm. We went both went to the same college. We yeah. both live in the same area. So we have like really similar walks of life, I guess. Yeah, very um, true. And we just get along really well. We I have know. So yeah. much fun. I always feel like when I'm with McKenna, like, I don't know. I feel like you're like an extension of me almost. Yeah. <laughs> like we're extensions of each other and, and like we just different kind of like ways. about yeah. stuff. And it's just like super comfortable. So when I thought about having a guest, I was like, no brainer. I would love for him. I was kind of nervous to ask you though. Really? Well, not that I was like nervous to ask you, but I was like, this is so new for me. Yeah. That I'm like, I don't really know what I'm doing yet. I oh, just see, I would love, I would, I'm so happy that you asked me oh. because I would never do anything like this on my own. And look at, look how. I know. It's so fun. Like we're just casually sitting here chit-chatting. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So I thought it would be fun. Since, <laughs> since we've known each other, we've gone through a lot together. Obviously we've yeah. grown our channels. We've shared our passions for home decor online um, and just built amazing communities, which you guys, like, we overlap. Like, there's so many. Our community feels like one big community because so many of you guys watch both of our videos. Yeah. Um, and since starting our channels, we have now both purchased homes that we're going to and, and have been renovating. Yes. So I thought it was going to be perfect to talk about renovating our first home. So yeah. I mean. <laughs> what a wild ride. I know. It is like, I, I remember, like, a week after getting my house being like, okay, who do I call? Like, like what do you <laughs> where's do? the landlord? Yeah. So <laughs> <Right> here, <laughs> just buy a house. They said it'll I be fun. Literally. You know? Yeah. And I actually was, well, I, when I purchased my house, um, I, it was such a bad time to buy a house. So bad. You think, in what way? In, Everyone well, the market was, was super high. The yeah. market was so high when I bought a house, but I also was, I had been redoing my apartment over and over yeah. again. I had saved up for so many years and it was like time that I wanted to buy a house, but also I knew it wasn't like the perfect time in the market to buy yeah. a house. So I actually was shifting a lot of my focus. I was actually going to open a store. <laughs> That's I remember I was, that. Yeah, yeah. Which I never really told anyone about. Which <gasps> I was exclusive. Going, exclusive Lone Fox, <laughs> which it might, like, I mean, it's still going to happen one day. Like I've always, my, one of my biggest loves and passions is having a store. Yeah. Like I've done it since I was so young. I had, I've always had a store, an yeah. Etsy store, an eBay store, always have loved owning just like a little shop. So I always knew I wanted that as a facet. And when the housing market was so insane, I was like, why don't I just create the physical location of Lone Fox and work on that for a while. But then this house just like fell into my lap and yeah. I went with that. So, <laughs> so what interest when you saw this house, you, you saw it online. I saw it you online. Obviously saw it in person. Yeah. So, so what were your thoughts? I was looking for probably like eight months, like eight months to a year I was yeah, looking for. Cause it takes a while. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to happen overnight. No. Yeah. And I, um, I don't, I, I thought there was going to be a lot more houses popping up than there were. Like yeah. I was like, Oh, everyone's probably going to be selling right now. Like there's gonna be so many houses popping up. And I would like get one random Zillow no notification every couple days and be like, Oh my gosh, there's finally a new house popping up. And I'd scroll through the pictures. Um, and I actually, I put in one offer on another house before this. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. you didn't tell me that? I didn't. No? Oh, remember the house that I, the single story house that had the fireplace with the double living rooms on either side with the really oh, beautiful the backyard kind of looked like how I had yes, the double. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it had the most beautiful backyard. And so I ended up looking at that house and I loved it so much. And so I put my offer in on it. And, oh, do you want to know what happened? Which I didn't, this is, we're going to have a lots of exclusive I love information. This for us. So I had no credit, no credit. Yeah. I had no credit before. They couldn't even find your no, credit, No, they couldn't right? even find my credit because my <laughs> parents- like missing. My parents taught me to never buy anything on credit. They're like, don't, yeah. you cannot have a credit card. Like you never buy anything on credit. Like you only pay for things if you have the money for it. So yeah, I've I grew always, up similarly, yeah. And I don't, I've just never had a credit card. I've always, it, I'm not buying something unless I have the money for yeah. it. I, I just don't love that because I'm a very forgetful person. So I'll forget to pay it. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> which I've definitely done. So I put in the offer and then I ended up well, I, I went to go get pre-qualified to put in the offer and they're like, um, we can't find your credit anywhere. And I was like, oh, that's great. It's like, what so, does it even mean when you can't find it? Like, it was like, 
it, it, gone. Yes. Like, it was, it, I literally had no, it just wasn't pulling up in their system. Yeah. And they're like, well, the offers are cut off tomorrow at 2 PM. Like we have to be able to oh, essentially no. find your credit by tomorrow at two. And we couldn't get it. We, I, I was not able to put in an offer because we could not figure out my credit. And basically what we figured out, what happened was, is that I purchased my car and that was like the only thing I've actually purchased where I've yeah. had a loan. And so when I purchased my car, they weren't reporting my loan payments to the credit bureau. <laughs> so all of it, like for all three, cause I think there's like the three different, like, yeah. you know, that how they have those, they weren't reporting it to any of them. So Equifax I basically, yes, and, all and of trans those. Union, yeah. Exactly. So I was, I had zero credit. So once they reported it, we had to wait like a month and then they pulled, they, then my credit was showing. It was showing. Yeah. It started showing. So then I was able to start looking for houses again. So I actually so had to like put it off one. for a month. And I also had to put off the storefront cause I needed a credit for that. Mm-hmm. I had to put off everything. And I was like, how do I find my credit? And I was like, who do I call? The government? Yeah. Like, who, who <laughs> Why is it you? Yeah. yeah, exactly. I didn't know what to do. Oh, so it went. So and then the next month, and then this one popped up. So then I lost on, the opportunity lost on the, the other one. one. And you want to know what happened? Actually, is someone sent me an email about a month ago, being like, "I was just walking through the neighborhood, and I noticed that the house that you toured is being demoed." <gasps> they have a huge notice of demolition on the gate and it's the exact oh, house I looked at. That they're tearing it down. They're tearing it down, everything. And it was so beautiful. Whoever lived there did such an amazing job at like the outside of the house. And it's like been landscaped like that for probably like 20 years because it's so lush and pretty. And they're going to tear and it down demolishing and put a modern it. Yeah, box. someone emailed me it. I was like, oh, that, ah. bre- that literally breaks my heart. I know. I don't know why. I mean, I don't know. A lot of people like that look. Yeah. And we just are the people that love old. <laughs> well, and you want to know something too is I would have gotten that house. It's a crazy thing because they, when they call, so I didn't think I was going to be able to get it. And then when the realtor called, they're like, oh, by the way, we only have like two offers. So if you want to like. So you would have been. I would have been. Gotten it. Yeah. Because I was offering over on this house because during this period of time, like the houses were so there wasn't yeah. many houses and the demand was so high. People were offering so much over. Um, but with this house, it was opposite. I offered so much under because no one looked at this house, which I just went off on a tangent on that one. <laughs> um, Cause that was like well, the and previous. No one, and he's mentioned to me before, no one looked at this house because the photos that they took were oh, horrible. You guys like the horrible. photos, which is so great because my before content's lovely in this oh, house. Yes. Yeah. Um, so like the photos of this house, when I saw it and this one was actually just like kind of close to my old apartment. So I actually ended up just like taking a long walk over and I was like, I'm just going to go take a look and see. And I saw the outside of it and I was like, Oh, it's kind of cute. Like cute. I'll um, call my realtor. And so I actually ended up going to like a trip to Palm Springs. And then my realtor called me on Thursday and was like, Oh, they're only accepting offers till tomorrow, Friday at five. And I was like, okay, well I'm not even back till Friday at two. So I went and toured the house Friday at two and had submitted an offer by five on the house. But did they have any other offers? They told me that they did. And it was a huge lie. They'd had no <laughs> other offers. They kept on telling me, oh, because I offered far, far, far under asking. Like, yeah. far, far under asking. Yeah. Um, because He's so bought, like I get really nervous. Negotiations scare me. I feel like you love, I, you well, thrive. No, I, I actually, if it's in person, if I, if we're doing this over email, I'm negotiating low. If we're in person, I'm scared. <laughs> like, I'm not the kind of person to be like, sorry, no, two points. Oh, what is that it? I said <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it is yeah. six bedrooms. Yes. It's this is this is a duplex. This yeah. is a huge property. It was it's, a really large house. This week I was working in our garden, an outdoor dining area at the new house. And we've never had a garden. So I've been enjoying it. Though I have no idea what I'm doing, Um, but I really wanted to prioritize the dining area because it's finally warmer out and we want to have barbecues out there and enjoy the longer days during the summer. And that really wouldn't be as enjoyable without a great night's sleep. We have the softest, most luxurious sheets from Bowl & Branch, and I've been raving about them to everyone that I can. I even told Drew about them and he was like, oh yeah, I already have them. And I shouldn't be surprised either because he has great taste and Bold and Branch has over 10,000 raving reviews on their bedding. Right out of the box, you can feel the quality of their bedding and they just keep getting softer and softer with every wash. They're made without toxins, free from synthetic pesticides, formaldehyde, and other harsh chemicals. They're also designed to feel incredible for all sleepers and are great to keep on your bed year round. So in the cooler and the warmer months, 
And we have them in white, but they come in 10 versatile colors to match your decor. And a lot of my work is very physical from demo and building furniture. So I value a good night's sleep. So I highly recommend bowl and branch sheets to give your bed that cloud-like coziness. Sleep better at night with bowl and branch sheets. Get 15% off your first order when you use promo code two hands at bowlandbranch.com. That's bowl and branch, B O L L A N D branch.com. Promo code two hands. Exclusions apply and see site for details. Thank you to Bowl and Branch for sponsoring this episode. So before I started sharing my renovation projects online and started my own YouTube channel, I actually designed websites for small businesses and other content creators. I know I don't talk about it a lot, but I did that. (laughs) I found that Squarespace was the best platform to use to create beautiful websites so my clients could build their brand and sell their products online. So much so that I built my own website, exomechanic.com on Squarespace. Now I was building websites for people over a decade ago and with all the amazing templates and features that Squarespace has introduced, it's totally something that you can do and design on your own for your own brand. And I feel like a lot of you listening might be a lot like me, whether you want to share your passion for home decor through blogging. With Squarespace, you can easily display posts from your social media profiles directly on your website, easily sell your products with a built-in online store, and cultivate and engage with your community directly on your Squarespace website with your blog's comment section, where you can like comments and reply in a thread to keep the conversation going. Go to squarespace.com slash XO for a free trial so you can check out all the features and start building the way you want your website to look. And then when you're ready to launch your website, use offer code XO to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Um, And so I ended up putting in an offer and, but they were basically trying to get me to up the offer the day after they yeah, were like, I mean, real realtors have a game that yes. they play. You know what I mean? They're, they're going to get the, try and get the best offer for their client. Yes. And obviously. And the photos, you guys of this house though, bad. and the owner that lived downstairs, which I'm not throwing like any shade at him or anything, but the no. design style downstairs was scary. It was maximalist, but like insane the wall that had all the art there was on there it. was a, the hallway downstairs did not have you could not see one inch of the, the plaster <laughs> it was all covered in pictures like the photos looked crazy so you really couldn't get an idea for it yeah so when i came and toured it i actually saw like the architecture and like all the coved ceilings and archways and stuff and that's when i was like oh this is such good bones but i feel like even if you couldn't really see past that like because when i toured it all the guy the guy had all his stuff in the downstairs unit still and oh it, so everything everything was, he was, was still, there was he, he was still, still living, living there? there yeah and so like his everything was there like in every room was painted a different bright color like it was just kind of hard to get the vibe we count, for remember it we went down the and we kind of painted uh, we counted all of the colors yes. like the colors of green yeah it was like mint and then you know, like mint was, and sage and everything. He was an eclectic, but didn't he have all the art downstairs? Too? No, that was this guy. Oh, that was this, this guy. guy. Oh, okay. This guy had all of the cool artwork, which I don't exactly know. I don't know the own. I mean, I didn't really know the owners downstairs and I didn't really know the owners upstairs. I just met them when I toured it the one time. Yeah. Uh, but I do know that the owner upstairs, like he ended up, I forget, like, he ended up moving out for some reason, but I know that he was like a big art collector or oh. like did something in this apartment that was crazy because there's also like even above me right here, like art lights yeah, installed, is, yeah. like pointed at different areas on the wall where you can just tell that something expensive was hanging there. Because yeah. also when I toured this, there was a ton of like, we would have been screaming. There was like 200 framed like what 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 are those frames that we like? The gold ones? The ornate ones? Ornate. I yeah, guess yeah. Is that the vintage term ornate. Like yeah. vintage ornate. Like 200 of those with oil paintings and all imagine? different sizes. Leaned up in the living room all against the wall. Like the art hadn't been taken out yet. So when I toured it, it was all still here. And I was like, oh my gosh. Do you like, know his name? Can we start? I don't know him? anything about, I do actually know his name. I've got <gasps> some of his mail. <laughs> actually? We can find out where he went. Yeah. We, that's just incredible. No, can he had imagine? really great stuff. And I mean, all the light fixtures in here too, which I don't know if the light fixtures were original to the house. I don't know. Or because, if he collected or, them. But then also the downstairs ones are all interesting too. Yeah. So it's just strange. Like, I don't know. Because also the like this one's Asian inspired. It's like a chinoserie or whatever, chinoserie light. So it's just like every single light is from different areas around the world. And it's just an eclectic, eclectic mix. Eclectic mix. Of yeah, things. but of old lights. But they're so cool. Yeah. 
But I mean, that was not really so. Nice then at after all. so after you found the house, and did you know that you were going to be looking for a duplex? No, I I didn't want to get a duplex actually. Yeah. Um, I wanted an actual house that had like a yard and like right. a garage and like actual house features, and not like yeah, right, a right, duplex right. with a small little kitchen. But then when I saw this one, I was like, oh my gosh! Like the downstairs could be work. I there's so many different rooms, and then also just for the price point at which I was going in at the offer, yeah. I was like, this would be such a good like deal. Yeah. Um, and it's so I felt 100%. like it would be a good opportunity. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do it. And I kind of was just like, it was kind of impulsy, but that's how I am as a person. Like yeah. I just do things like I paint the wall a color, like, and if I don't like it, I'll fix it. You know? Uh, well, that's why you should be yeah. because if you overthink things, then you won't ever do that. Exactly. So I was like, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to put an offer in, and I offered so low thinking that I wouldn't get it. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, you need to bring the offer up. And they were wanting me to increase the offer. Like an ex- extreme amount home. of money, like astronomical. And I was like, no, sorry. Like I'm staying at Ooh, my he offer. Held, he yeah. held firm. No, I did. I actually stayed, like I only ended up going up like about like 50K oh. total, like in the end. Hey. And they were wanting me to go up like multiple hundreds of thousands, thousands. of dollars. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and I was no. like, sorry, no. But they had no other offers. And I just knew they didn't because I can just tell that the realtor was like, he was not a good actor. Um, yeah, he I was see. like, we have many other offers and like, but mm-hmm. if you could just put yours in a little higher, we have an all cash offer. And I'm like, accept that one then. Like, why are you accepting my loan that I don't I even have like credit? I channel you <laughs> next time. I was like, so. No, nervous. because I was like, if you have an all cash offer, there's no way you're not accepting it. Yeah. You know? So why am I even going to fight with it? Yeah. I'm not, cause I'm not. No. So I'm going to stay at this and then they accepted it. <laughs> Because I also knew, I also knew when I toured, the guy downstairs was like, we have to get out of here. Like, we oh. have to be moved in the next month. So I knew they needed to sell. Ah. That was another thing. I they knew it wasn't motivated. like they were waiting. And they're like, oh, we could sell at whatever price we get it, like the best offer at. Yeah. So I knew they needed to sell too. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> so, so you bought the house. You got it. You got the keys. Yeah. The first day. Would I you was do? breaking in weeks before. Oh, were I we think all? I told you that, I did, right? I did, yeah. I did, I did, I did. Yeah. No, I was breaking in the windows. But what'd you do? Like, so when you walked in, like, how did you think about where to start? Because I didn't know where to start with our renovation. I was like, well, I now ne- what? I at least needed to open up the two units because they okay, were still you, two you separate a- units. So, but so it was still a little bit of a mystery as if, like, if I opened up a big archway in that one wall yeah. downstairs, if it would really connect up. And that's like one of the first things that we did was because the flow was so challenging. You'd have to walk all the way out outside and walk all the way around to go to the bottom unit. And you didn't have any interest in keeping it as a duplex. You really wanted to utilize the entire space. But I wanted to be able to put it back if I wanted to in the future because all you have to do is close up that wall. And they had opened it before. We actually were able to see where someone had opened that up into a single family home in the past. So it had been trans, like it had been kind of merged back and forth. Yeah. Between the two, which is interesting. Well, yeah, because actually someone had had used this as a a full house. And you said that you had found like in the, when when was this house built? The 19... 19 29. 29. Yeah. And did you find information about the? I like couldn't find w- anything, but Justin did. <gasps> Justin found information um, in like old census records yeah. of like two people. I think we could probably pop some of it in here. Yeah. Um, of like two people that lived here, Mildred and Mildred. Yeah, Mildred. Mildred and her husband. Like, Justin, do you remember? I forget their names. Like, Mildred and like Ronald or something. Aww. Um. And, and then there was another guy. There's two, or was it two guys and two girls? And then one of the girls, yeah. Oh. Mildred and the two different guys. And then one of the guys worked at the, at the local train station oh. as like someone, as like a um, convenience person, a convenience person on the train. Oh. And then the other guy worked Like a concierge? At, like a concierge, oh, a see. train concierge. Yeah. That's exactly what it was called. And then the other guy worked as a um, vacuum cleaner repair. Vacuum cleaner repair. Isn't that so cute? It's just like, it's fun to know the history of your, you know, like, because we love old, but every old thing has history. Yes. And to know something small, even if it's so insignificant, like we found of of the house that we have in in Texas and the cottage was built in 1910. And there's an old picture of the, like a holiday Uh party that they have. Wait, where did you find that? From the county, like the town records. I need to do that. I need yeah. to like go to like the historical historic records. LA like center or whatever it is yes. and see if they have any records. Yeah. And I've been trying to get, and I'll look back in the, the pictures because we have outside, like I wanted to restore the front to yeah. what it was. So we had to see what it was 
like, yeah. but we can't tell the color because they only took pictures black of black and, and white. white. So, you know, it was just like kind of like fun to see different things about your house because we do love the history yeah. of, of things and we love to save and how you've highlighted even through the rooms that you've already worked on. Yeah. I mean, it's been so, so special. Cool. Like, well, because in this particular area like this wall behind me right here and this one I wanted to remove them but that was going to cause me to have to remove the original tiled walls in the kitchen downstairs oh. because oh. they would have had to put support beams down yeah. through them and they would have had to have removed the tile yeah. which I said absolutely will you not be doing that so I added this big arch instead this is incredible yeah this one was but this one actually went through a lot of uh trial and error because they get the shape didn't get the shape they <gasps> messed it up so many times <laughs> Which I also didn't really share that either no. because I was like, oh my gosh, so much negative stuff's going on. Like, I'm just going to pretend like it worked. You know, but in the back of the, in behind the scenes, I was like, it's not working, No, but it's working now. It's working yeah. now. If you pay attention to the details, yeah. it's working now. Yeah, it's beautiful now. But especially with arches, like we were walking into this room and I saw the, saw the arch through the arch through the arch. It makes a bit, like if that was wonky. And well, and you the original ones. They did them perfect. Oh, so like the architecture, like people how just did they, they do, build. How did they how build? did they build? It's like it's such great things. I don't know what it and it's like I don't know how people we can't do it today. Like, yeah. I mean, we can, we definitely can, but it's like, how did they build such great things without the same tools and like the same like information and like technology we have now? I like having what I call a capsule collection for my clothing, which is classic quality basics that I can mix and match to create tons of different outfits. But it can be really hard to find high quality clothing, especially basics at an affordable price. And a friend of mine was wearing this beautiful, like simple silky dress. And she told me that she got it from Quince. So I immediately took a look at their website and quickly noticed that they have really high quality fabrics like Mongolian cashmere and mulberry silk, but their prices were incredibly affordable. And I just got their washable silk dress in black and I love how soft it is. And I also got their Mongolian cashmere tee, which is the perfect like wardrobe staple for year round. And I even saw pieces like hundred percent European linen pants for 40 bucks and 14 karat gold jewelry for, from like starting at $30 and all of their prices prices are 50 to 80% less than similar luxury brands. So you're probably questioning like I was how they're able to offer these fabrics and quality at great prices because Quinn's partners directly with top factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices to cut out the costs of the middleman and pass the savings on to us. Shop with Quince today and discover the affordable luxury you deserve. Right now, go to quince.com slash XO to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince.com slash XO for free shipping and 365 day returns quince.com slash XO. Thank you to Quince for sponsoring today's episode. It is no secret that I love home decor and decorating my home. And throughout the years, I've really discovered my own interior style by mood boarding, you know, rooms and homes that I love and experimenting with different styles in my own space and on the design home app through design homes challenges. I get to design full rooms with furniture, art, and decor in different styles, and getting to pair textures, shapes, and colors together in different spaces has really helped me to feel more confident applying those ideas to my own home. I also love that the furniture and decor on the app are real collections that I can buy in real life. So if I see something I like for my home, I can get it. Design Home partners with hundreds of top brands in interior design and has a massive catalog of furniture and decor to experiment with. Designing a home is so fun, but can also be really stressful with so many style and decor options out there. So getting to experiment before designing in real life helps so much. You can install Design Home with the link below and get free in-app currency to play around with and explore. Plus you can even make real life purchases inside the app with the Design Home inspired store. Thank you to Design Home for sponsoring today's episode. I didn't know that. I knew that they had messed up one of them and you were like a little worried about it. They messed up all three. All this three. one, that one, and the one downstairs. I just like, that was blows my mind, even through the cottage renovation and just like the attention that people took, or, like 
hundreds of years ago is not the attention that people put into homes now. And that just blows. They don't want to do the detailed work. No, they don't want to do. It's, it's literally, I like, this is not a, this is not scary. at all a good reference, but it's like, you remember that Kim Kardashian where she's like, people need to get up and work. I do it, remember but that. But like, not like, I think that she was, wasn't she telling she that said, towards like women or yeah, something? It, I forget was, what it was. But it was misconstrued. It misconstrued, yeah. but like, it's like people don't want to work as hard. It's like the, it, it, there's not as much effort put into it, yeah. like, or as much time. Yeah. It's just kind of like the more easy way. Well, it's just like they they want to build something new over restoring something old because it's it's less work to build yeah. something new. You're starting with scratch. All your materials are new. Like I saved all of the two by fours. They would not touch them. They're the old two by fours. I'm like, I'm using everything. Oh, yeah. They wouldn't touch them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, use this one. He goes, no. Yeah. I'm like, dude, use this one. It's he, a perfectly good. It's stronger than the ones yeah, that you're using. But he's no. probably thinking the new one's stronger. Yeah, but yeah. it's totally not true. This one's been standing for a hundred years. Yeah. It's like iron. It's like petrified. It's petrified like wood. <laughs> it's petrified. It's, it's petrified. a fossil. <laughs> so coming into this house, did you know that you wanted to start in the kitchen? Um, kind of just because okay. I knew that it was like the area that I wanted to do like the actual demo in. And so oh, I, I knew I needed to like break the walls down in here. So yeah, I ended up having someone come out to see if we could remove all these walls to actually open up the kitchen above into like a full open kitchen. Like where we would be sitting now would be like an island. That would be incredible. Yeah, like an but island I in the see, center. Mean, yeah. But then they were basically saying that it was going to cost over $100,000 to do that, first Ooh. of all, which I was just couldn't even believe it cost that much that money. That would have been my entire, almost my entire renovation budget on the cottage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> in one building, Yeah. Here's your kitchen for so just two walls. So I said, absolutely walls. not. Yeah. Um, so it didn't do that because then they also were going to have to – it was just going to be a huge de yeah. demolition and like I was like – and I don't mind having a small kitchen because I also like to be completely honest, I don't cook that much. Like I do yeah. like – I like baking like every now and then. <laughs> you don't have to explain that to me. Yeah. I don't cook. I have Romeo for that. Yes. Um. I mean Marie – But I do want a pretty kitchen. Me too. Like I love – like I, I still want to be in a pretty kitchen and I actually do still like go in there. I shoot lots of content in there. Like I still do very like – kitchen activities, I guess. <laughs> but, um, I don't exactly cook every single day, but I do no. like, I, but I also want to inspire people for their kitchens, you know, yes, <laughs> like I'm still creating a space. I love, I mean, the attention to detail in this kitchen, it's absolutely stunning. Thank like you. Painky, painting it brown and doing like all the textures. Yeah, I feel like that's what I see the most. Like the textures, even even you paying attention to like the window. What are they called? Mullions? Oh, the mullions. Or, or yeah. like people call them actually muntins. M muntins, muntins or mullions. One of them has basically like one of them is where you insert it in the window. And then one of them is like where it has a frame and it oh, like you pop it. In. It's like I two see. different things, but the same thing kind of. I see. It's absolutely stunning. If you haven't seen this kitchen, you have to go check it out. I mean, I'm pr I'm pretty sure all of you have. And if you haven't, you're missing out. <laughs> I like, think my favorite is the the pendant lights. Yes. I just love Hanging those. in the windows. I just, I think like, I feel like if you could always get a vintage light, like I feel like a vintage light is like the one vintage element you need in every space. Like I feel like one, yes. a vintage light just changes everything. Yeah. And most of the time, I mean, you can find really, you've found beautiful ones and they've been have, having a higher price tag on them, but you can even find vintage that maybe needs to be rewired yeah. at a thrift store. A, oh yeah. Even you know, at a, a flea market. Places. I got like a one for $200, like a huge raw iron chandelier, but it wasn't rewired. So they, yeah. like, they just sold the iron framework of it for $200 at a architectural salvage. And I thought it was going to be like a $2,500 chandelier. Yeah. So when they said that I didn't even, I don't have a space for it, but I was like, I'm absolutely buying this absolutely. because I'll get it re strung in the Rewired future. Yeah. And use it for some kind mm -hmm. of project. You never know. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, I love, I love, love, love the kitchen. And then I love what you're doing with like the color palettes and stuff. It's very warm in here. That's what I'm going for. Yeah. Very warm. It's very, and I like that too. And it's so crazy. Like how we've, we've developed our own style paths, uh -huh. but they equally have the same amount of cozy warmth. Yeah. Um, but in di completely different ways. No, like for I sure. went more of a, a French. Yeah. Route. Like a French, um, maybe feminine, like yeah. French pretty, yeah. like, uh, but still like super sophisticated y and right. like classic. classic. And I feel like mine's kind of like, um, Spanish, Spanish, moody. Uh, it it has it's kind of eclectic. To it too. Yeah, yeah it's it does. eclectic. I love heavy, like and masculine. It, I feel like a lot of my designs too also have like a little bit of a masculine touch, like the movie room with the plaid curtains, Absolutely. and then like the brown and like the gothic lights kind of add that 
I love the juxtaposition of like feminine, feminine and masculine. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's beautiful. So do you have any, pl- like, if, let's say in the future with this house, when you're all done with it, would you save it as an investment property and turn it back into a duplex and move? I don't, I, I mean, that's, that's probably like a far, to far be off. completely honest, I don't think I'll ever sell this house. I don't know why. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's like my first one. And I feel like, I feel like this is probably like the house where I'll absolutely do every same thing by hand in, like what you did with the cottage. Like I'm working on every single element of it. And you develop a very personal Personal relationship relationship with the project. Exactly. Like this is like the one that I did everything with, but I couldn't imagine myself doing that with every single house I work on in the future. Like I would like to find like a team of people like that can help me paint and like do things where that aren't at where I could spend more of my time, like on the design elements and stuff. Yeah. Um, so I feel like for that reason, I'll probably end up keeping it just because I put all the work, like my own time and effort into it. Plus yeah. I just like love this house. I don't it's know so cool. something about it. So good. And I love the area. Like, yeah, I just want to have a house here in this area. Yeah. Do what's, what's your favorite thing or your favorite thing to do in DIY or like, you know, like if in this house so far, what was your favorite thing to do? Was it the tile floor? Was it? Was that my favorite? Yes. Was it the top floor? No. No. <laughs> It wasn't my favorite. Absolutely not. <laughs> Just tile floor. Remember, didn't you have to take it up once? Parsh- I had to take it? away, take up the ent- all the edges. So everything that was cut and applied after, we had to take it up because it. I we used like a mortar that was pre mixed and it wasn't for stone. Like I literally walked oh. in the kitchen and it just popped right off. I was like, oopsies, and then had to scrape all the mortar off because so I that it get it smooth get again, it smooth so again. you could put it. Back yes. down. And then I thought I was going to have to spray, scrape all of the original mortar off that from the tile that I removed before, but I mortared it right over the top. Oh, good. Yeah. I just did it over the top and then I did a little tiny incline, which you could barely See, tell. Yeah. yeah. But it worked so well though. Totally. Yeah. And I um, love the like change in the tile yes. uh, shape. Oh yeah, absolutely. It makes a good transition because yeah. you had to do a transition there. A transition really and good. then this tile shape is going to be in the laundry room. So like oh, it's so in that little, there's going to be another kind of threshold like this. And then it'll go like heck or like um, herringbone in the oh, laundry pretty. room or like something like stacked or something like oh, that. But just really a pretty. different shape, but same material. Was this a costly material to, to get? Like, it, no, it was, it was a uh, 10, $11 a square foot. Oh, which isn't like that bad no. because I was looking for like all of the like reclaimed flooring that because this isn't reclaimed. This is travertine, mm-hmm. uh, tumbled travertine. But the reason why it's cheap is because it's really thin. It's only like this like thin, pay- uh. which is what I needed because I was putting it over mortar. I didn't want to increase the thickness, which a lot of natural yeah. stone tiles are like kind of thick or the reclaimed ones are like all an inch thick. I see. So it was like I think it was like eleven dollars and fifty cents a square foot from clay tile. Um, yeah. CLE tile or whatever, but it was uh-huh. like the most affordable Clean. reclaimed looking flooring that I could find. Oh, it's beautiful. I, I love it. Okay. So that, that was a joke. I knew that the tiling was not going to be his favorite. Oh yeah. But so my what, favorite. What's your favorite thing that you've done in here? Honestly, probably favorite was the vent hood above oh, because yeah. that just turned out so good. Like and it just, different. it looked and exactly how I pictured it in my head. Like yeah. so, and I just, I couldn't believe like we got it to look like that. Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't think we were going to be able to. It feels like it's like part. That's what I wanted. Yeah. It just, it molds like, you know, like ours, like I built it to where it's, you know, it's a box yeah. that comes out and uh-huh. it's like a traditional, not, yeah. not a traditional in style, but it's. It's like, it's like, it's, it's like a focal point of its own, yes. whereas mine's kind of blended into the wall, but it also still is kind of like a statement on it as well. Yeah. I just knew I wanted, I knew I was going to plaster. So I knew I wanted to plaster the range hood into the wall because I knew I was plastering the ceiling and the walls and they were going to kind of look like stone. Yeah. So it was like, I definitely want the range hood to also be in that same finish. So it looks like the architecture was like carved into the walls like that. That was like what I was thinking in my head when I was designing yeah. that. So did demo scare you when you had to demo that kitchen? It well, it did because like the walls were just coming off, like the tile. <laughs> it was pulled. it was ripping off, and like and but the thing is, is that my contractor that I was talking to was like, no, like you should be able to just get it right off, like off the surface. And I'm like trying to chip it off the surface, and no. it was so hard. Like, and you, you, I swear, like on demo shows on like HGTV, they're just like demoing so fast. No. It took me like two days to demo the kitchen, just to tile on the walls. And yeah. I thought it was going to, I swear to you, be like an hour long process. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> I remember 
watching and starting the video, right? And I knew you were doing, I knew you had already working on it. And I knew how hard tile was to get off. And it's I started awful. your video and you literally started by saying like, I don't think it's going to be that hard. And I was like, audibly, like, I'm like, try it, Drew. Well, go try it. <laughs> well, also because I knew that you had done all this already. And I'm like, if McKenna's done it, I could probably right. do it. If McKenna's really? done it, I could probably do it. And then like, I got you didn't to it and know I was like, I this was is like secretly so like really strong. Literally, right? yeah. And also something else that makes it atrocious to get tile off the wall is if they use the mesh backed tile. Oh, it pulls off the yeah. It, because the mesh gets stuck and then it, it you can't get it off. No. But if they use individual tiles, they pop off easier. But yeah. the mesh ones are awful. So bad. So I was like ripping holes. I had to have the entire kitchen re-drywalled because oh. it was just coming all off. So <laughs> Something that I get asked a lot and something I talked about last episode was setting budgets, how much yeah. things cost. Mm-hmm. And so I explained that I didn't have a budget because going into a process like this, I didn't know how to set one. Oh, same. Right? So, exactly. So you're the same. Like, do yeah. you ha- Did you come into this project having a budget and knowing what you were going to spend when you've never done something like this before? So a little – I only knew what I was going to spend on the marble. Like, okay. so when I, cause I knew that that was going to be like my one expensive thing. I knew I was keeping all the cabinets. I knew I was doing all the labor myself. Right. So I knew that like the flooring and the painting and all that, like it was I was just going to be material, material cost. Yeah. yeah. So like, I kind of was like, I could spend more on the marble. And so that's what I did was like, yeah. I tried to find like a stone yard that had like good price on the marble. Yes. And then also, um, like th- that had the marble that I wanted as well. So once right. I finally found that stone yard, I got all the marble that I wanted because I knew that was going to actually take up like a ton of the visual space oh, in the totally. kitchen. Because this you was went actually up the an walls. afterthought too. That was an afterthought. Did you have extra pieces? Yes. Those are all extra pieces. And it just happened to work that they look so good in there. Yeah. Because they're actually flipped. The veins I, all I flipped. See, yeah. And when they first installed it, I hated it. <gasps> I hate it. And they installed it. And I was like, I just made the biggest mistake of my life. Because like, <laughs> because actually before it was installed, I darkened all of this marble. So it was lighter when oh. they installed it. And they went over it with an ager. And it, it deepens all the veins. Oh, um, I didn't even know you could do that. So actually something else that I haven't said is that the countertops, I didn't <laughs> put the ager on because they were wrapped. The right. backsplash has all the ager on it. Um, but you can't really tell because no, it's like- I would have never You would have never known. No. And that's why I didn't say anything because you can't tell. Well, that's but good to know that you can age you can it age if you it. want to. It deepens the color. And you can oh. keep aging it. So you can age it once, let it like cure, and then age it again. And it will keep darkening and darkening and darkening. But it that's doesn't fascinating. affect like the white of the marble. It just it only just whatever color pigment. the yeah. pigment. Yeah. That is fascinating. It's called um, Ager Tiger. Ager Tiger. Yeah, you can Google it. It's like $100 for a little can like this, Ooh. but it'll do your whole kitchen. And it just like, it, it's like if you were to like put um, like wood polish on wood. I it's see. the same thing for marble. Make, like makes it vi- more yes, vibrant, vibrant and, and it's brings so it. It's so pretty. And the second they did it here, I was like, I'm obsessed with it. But in light form, when the yeah. marble was like honed and very like chalky, I was, I did not like it at yeah. all. Because it just looked like you could, it, you could tell that it was like, different pieces and it wasn't like one solid piece but then also putting items in front of it helps yeah it kind of breaks up the like because sometimes when you look at things when they're in the state you kind of have to trust the process when you're going through a renovation because you'll get to a point where you're like oh i don't like that but let me keep going because it might be just the first layer exactly literally that was like at the Sonza family house when i painted that room pink yeah and every day i walked into that room being like i hate Hate it, but I need to stick with it. Like yeah. I hate this you just color have to keep going. because it can shift. Like you bringing in the bed and adding the bedding can change the entire color of the room. Yeah, like and that was the same thing. I did the brown cabinets. Everyone hated it. They're like, we hate it. Yeah. <laughs> we hate the brown cabinets because everyone's like, it's going to be too dark. You know that that's actually why. Because I, I used to work for clients and doing, you know just a few clients here and there, and transitioning into starting my YouTube channel. And that was the one thing that I would hate about working for clients is that they wouldn't trust the process. Yeah. So I had this, does my mom and I actually worked on a project when I was really young for a lady and she didn't trust the process. So every day she was very adamant about being on site. Absolutely being not. Being in there. That's and why she I can't would, do client work. I can't. I can't. And it just got to a point where I'm like, you <laughs> You need to just l- get let. It, we need to get somewhere because Cause she would make decisions like and change things all the time. Yeah, they, you need to design your own house. You hired a designer for the reason for a reason. Exactly, you have to trust the process. Exactly. Sometimes we have to tell us ourselves. We have to remind ourselves that like 
let me just keep going it, yeah. and, and it'll get better, you know, or, or it won't and you'll change it. No like painting, you know, exactly. You'll just change it. Yeah. That, and that's what's great about working on our own projects because we can be like, oh, we'll just like, change it, which yeah. is nice because you'll, you'll, you like learn from that because like, yes. I feel like I've learned so much doing my own projects. Just my design eyes developed so much from yeah. like, oh, this color doesn't work with that. Like I thought it would. Yeah. And oh. things like that. Yeah. So I, I think going back to budgets, I think that it's impossible in this situation. I don't know. I think if we were buying a house to flip, there then would you be have to hundred exactly. percent. Cause then you're like, okay, I can only sell this house for probably this because the comps in the area only support yes. this price uh-huh. point. So I can't put a lot yeah. and you're working more into a budget, mm-hmm. but when you're doing our work and you feel like you're going to keep this house forever, yes. you're kind of just paying for what comes up, you yeah. know, you're like, okay, I want to do this. How much is it going to cost? Yeah. Does it fit into you know? like my budget for the month or does oh, it Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Can I afford this yeah. That, and I'll yeah. worry about the rest exactly. of the rooms later. Mm-hmm. You're kind of constantly living in a renovation too. Yeah. Has that been hard moving into a renovation? Um, well, the nice thing was, is that I lived at the apartment for like five months of the oh, renovation right. in here. The- yeah. And that was only because I just pay I like oh, I just going month to month there so I was, was going month to yeah. month and also I was like you know what? I will pay extra to live here and not in a construction zone and get the house to like a really good point just because I knew that I was also still I was still shooting so much content like branded content at the apartment mm-hmm. I was working here for the YouTube channel so I kind of needed like yeah. a couple different spaces to like work out of and still like create my normal content yeah. on my channel and stuff. Yeah, it was it was similar to what we did too because yeah. I had to live with my parents for a mm-hmm. while. I mean, we, it was ours was literally unlivable. Like yeah. we could not. No, yours were like walls were gone. <laughs> <laughs> I did a major. inhabitable, inhabitable, and I really used the, all the materials. I took off the materials to reimagine them back in the house. Yeah. So everything was kept, but it was all went back into different places. That's so cool though. I it's, love that. I mean, like, I don't think anyone in the early stages, I got a lot of, I mean, you're, you're really hearing a lot of stuff you would never hear on the, on the YouTube channel. But in the beginning, I got a lot of like comments and people saying that I was ruining the house. And that like hurt me like to my core. Cause I had never done something like that before. And I was like, I'm ruining, but you don't even know what I'm doing yet. I haven't even touched a wall I yet. I remember the, the one about the like entryway. The foyer. The every- foyer. People and the oh, foyer. they were married uh, to the foyer. And I was like, but it's all going to be okay. I'm going to use it all. And yeah. I don't even think I knew at the beginning that I was going to take everything off and reuse it and salvage it. And yeah. I don't, I didn't communicate it because I didn't know how to formulate the the message. Like I, cl- I needed to work through it. Yeah. And I had so many people come back later on, like literally a year later and comment these paragraphs saying, I'm so sorry. I judged you yeah, no. early on yeah. not understanding your goal mm-hmm. or what you were going to do. And like what you've done is like actually amazing because you were able to use the materials yeah. and reimagine them. So you weren't living in 1910. Yeah. What was I supposed to do with that four year? <laughs> Do you know the last people that lived there? That was their living room? No. Where was their couch in front of the doorway? That makes literally no sense to me. That's not livable. No. <laughs> So it just didn't make sense. And you really have to make every home your own and make it make sense like this for him. You know, like he's not going to rent it out as a duplex. So you joined them and created your live workspace. Truly. Yeah, but I probably like would not actually like remove the entire wall downstairs just because like- Oh, not like like, me. Well, (laughs) no. Did you do that? No. Oh. (laughs) You know, I removed all the walls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would not probably do the entire wall just in case I wanted to do that in the The future, you know? The opening works perfectly. Yeah. Well, I couldn't even remove the whole wall. There's a stairwell there. Yeah, you need yeah. like oh, the whole structure. Yeah, exactly. Of it all. That was really the only option I had was to open that one little arch there. It but works. it's so perfect. Oh, I've walked through it a bajillion times. It feels since I've been like here. it feels like it's supposed to like always be there. Yes. Doesn't it feel normal? Yeah, because I walk down there and I see yeah. Marie and uh-huh. I'm like, hey! Yeah. <laughs> and it's a pretty view too, because you look at the fireplace down there. Oh, when yeah. You're walking through. Uh-huh, right when you walk in. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really pretty. So you finished with the kitchen. Yeah. And now you're kitchen. moving into the living room. Finish the kitchen and the movie room. And the movie and room. And the movie room only, the only reason I kind of swapped to the movie room was just because I found that sofa. Right. And then I got super excited to upholster it and then found the fabric and then it got upholstered. And then it was like, okay, well, the fa- the couch is coming back to my house in a week. Like yeah. I need to paint the room. I can't paint it with the couch in it. So then it just turned into a full makeover a full in that makeover. room. Yeah. And you go, you stay in there a lot. Yeah, we actually have, and I really thought I wasn't because I'm also not really like, I'm not like a movie watcher. Like yeah. I like makes a movie room, doesn't watch movies. Um, 
<laughs> but like I have been, which is so good. Wow. Like I like I would watch movies and it's stuff, like but normally we just do it in the experience. living room. Yeah, yeah. It's like Marie will literally be like, wanna watch a movie in the movie room? And we'll like, we've probably it's only been done for like a month, but we've probably been in there like 10 different nights in the past month. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. No, actually, yeah. yeah. That's um, so cool. How you added, like, you didn't have space for the TV yes. with the hutch, but she, he added a, a projector. Do you feel like the hutch feels okay in there? Yes. Okay. I, okay. Well, I on, visually across, on camera. It comes across yeah. on camera differently. It does. Like, when you're in the space... That never, it, we only see it in the space too. Yes, uh, exactly. So it never it's weird that bothered it came me, like that. but then I could see why on the camera because you're like shooting from that angle where like the couch almost cuts it off a yeah. little bit that it looks huge against that wall. No, it does not feel that way. Yeah, in person. in person it's not. It feels, it feels like fine. What else would you have put there? Well, I, I don't know. I just, all I could have done there is like a wall mounted TV and like and a little underneath. console under it, maybe. Yeah, but it's like not a, deep. That thing no, isn't deep. It's not very deep. Yeah. It just, I think it's like, but it, I don't know. It's just on camera. Yeah. It doesn't it's just feel on that camera. Way on, in, it just visually looks large on camera, I think. But in person, it's really nice. It's really, <laughs> it's really cozy in there. So you're in the living room now. Yeah. And that, that's just been taking a while, just mainly because it took me forever to pick a paint color. The oh the lime wash in the living room I tried Eastwoods from Portola and then that uh-huh. one was way too light like you couldn't see the texture on the wall and then I did uh, Kingdom by Portola and that one was too gray no I did Antler by Portola oh, Antler. and I thought that was going to be more brownish but it was like so Ooh, it's a good, gray I almost got a sample of that Antler one because that was the only one that, that was like a little taupey yeah like kind of I thought so too and it was so great like castle medieval yeah. cement on the wall and I was like I don't like the medieval cement. can you imagine leaving that color too with your stained glass being amber, uh, amber. I know that would have been it would have twanged yeah like it would have been a weird and then so I was like what do I do on the walls like what am I supposed to do so then I was like I'll just do a normal color like a normal paint because the walls are already plastered so it has like a little texture yeah. on there but I also just wanted more texture like the actual like That's what I how, did in the kitchen yeah with the plaster but then I was like I'll just do a paint color I'll just do a paint color so yeah. I, I opted for fair and balls old white it looks really good. The old white does look really good. That was what we wanted in. The, I wanted in the um, cottage on the fireplace and mm-hmm. then the range hood. I wanted it to be visually textured and also physically textured. Yeah. So we did the plaster in like really rough. Yeah. Not even, I didn't even sand it down because I yeah. wanted it so rough. I, le- I wanted like caked on. Yeah. Cakey. Like an old Italian plaster. Yeah. Piece. That's just been plastered over and over again over uh-huh. the years. And then I put the lime wash, but I mixed my own lime wash. I followed the Sorry Girls as. Uh, tutorial and got that hazy taupe. Oh, I you know. you mix with the plaster lime. with lime? Yes. <gasps> I, I well, could do not that. the plaster itself, but I made the paint to go over, over the plaster. It. Oh, you oh yeah, you painted over the top of the plaster with lime wash. With lime wash. I bet you, you like mixed. mixed the lime wash with the plaster together. I bet you could. I wonder. I mean, why couldn't you? You just dye the you plaster. Know, the plaster was actually so fun to do in the kitchen. Not on the ceiling. The ceiling was awful because it oh. like it just drips on you. And it's it's pretty thin, the product actually. But on the walls, oh. it is so satisfying to, to um, it's plaster that on the walls. It creates like a, a haze. Uh-huh. Almost like a like, – It's like – like uh matte and shine yeah. matte and, like it is it's uh, burnished it's they call it like burnishing where you like you press really hard to get like a shine and then you go the opposite direction to get it matte so actually you can keep working on it like after it dries down you can go over it in opposite directions to like basically because there's sand in it so as you keep roughing it up more sand shows through so there's have- lots of different things you can like do with plaster I'm like staring at him in awe because I'm about to ask him, does it ever blow your mind how much you've learned? Isn't it crazy? It's like to hear our conversations now versus 2019. Yes. When like we were just like, oh, we're like, what acrylic paint brand should I use? These little bottles or these little ones. Well, I can paint my wall with this. (laughs) We've just caught like we're in a hole. It's just wild. It's just crazy. I don't, I don't know. It's so weird because I feel like, um, like I did this, I, I had like a scrapbooking YouTube channel yes. and then I went on to like a fashion YouTube channel yes. and then I went on to an interior design YouTube channel. And then it's just like so many, I don't know. It's just so much progression that's been made. It's yeah. just so unreal feeling, if that makes sense. Oh, a hundred percent. This feels so unreal. Uh-huh. And like, even I think we've, we've both have paths that have led us to different careers. Yeah. Like, you know, I was in interior design with my mom, but then I went to fashion and then I was in marketing and now I'm here. Yeah. It's almost like, it felt like this is how it always should have been. Uh-huh. 
And the others were just like gearing up to get me here. Kind of the same because I'm someone that like I was always someone my parents said this about me too is like I cannot focus on one thing. Like once I get something up and running, I'm on to the next thing. So like you get. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, did that next. Did that next. Like bu- like built a fashion channel next. Like that's yeah. how my brain was though. Like it was like, OK, like did like made this Etsy store and got it up and going next working on the next project next project like I just always wanted a new business to work on but then Lone Fox was the one where like I did it and I was like oh this is the one because it was always like I was looking for like the the one the one and And it took me so many and then this one was like where it was like oh this is it this is right because I haven't even at all shifted what I wanted to do is like I only add things to it. It's an evolving thing, thing in and itself. of itself. Yes, exactly. Which I feel like if fashion, it wouldn't feel as evolved. Like no. it, it would always be like I don't know. Like it's y- interesting. With with I feel like with fashion, like it's almost like you're the one having to evolve it. If that like I don't know if yeah. that makes sense. Or no, people are having to evolve it for you to follow it almost. Whereas yeah. this is like we can create our own evolutions. Like, yeah. I don't know. That kind of is hard to make sense, but it makes sense in my head. It's almost, <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. In the, it, it makes sense, but in a way, fashion should be the same, but yeah. for some reason, it's not. It's not. It's, no. it's a different, there's so many similarities. Like, I feel like a lot of people in fashion go into home decor and and maybe vice versa yeah. because it is very creative and you're yeah. styling a home or yourself. So it, it has a lot of similarities in terms of like color theory yeah. and all of the things and textures and fabrics. It's the same thing, but it's just so different. And I feel like we create an entire evoke it like a feeling in a room yeah. and, and an like an am I making any well, sense? Well no that's exactly what it was. It was like I got I actually got bored of fashion because mm-hmm. it was like all like I was just like okay put on my outfit. I took my photo. Um but I wanted yeah. to like do more than that. Cause it's yeah. like, I, I would just do lookbook videos or like styling an outfit. It's just, but there was only so much you could do with men's fashion at the time. But I was it's like, true. what can I do next? And I was not like wanting to wear skirts and like really like take my style to like, you know, like that, that extreme, realm, yeah. um, just like style icon kind of like realm. So I was like, what can I do? And so that's when I, when I started doing interior design and I was realizing like, oh my gosh, these are like my canvases now. It yeah. was kind of like, oh my gosh, I could do so much in this room. And that's, when I really shifted and was like, this is what I need to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like we've both come a long way and we've both found like peace with yeah. what we work on. And we like, I wake up every, I don't know about you, but I wake up every excited to figure out whatever project oh, that I'm going to be working on. Literally every single day I wake up and I'm like texting Justin, like, what are we going to work on today? <laughs> <laughs> like, what are we going to do? And it's like creating, you know, our, our, our jobs are like layered, you know, cause it's not just that we share content online, yeah. but we also for f- first and foremost, create in real life, and we just choose to share that with you guys yes. on YouTube and mm-hmm. social media and stuff. And it's been so much fun. Like it's it's so crazy that we're just sitting here in your house with, a, I know. with like a beautiful kitchen behind us, and like it's just like I don't know. I've had I've been having a lot of those moments lately, a lot of grateful moments, yeah. you know, because I think we just bought the house and we're ready to start a family, and that would have never happened before. It would have happened. Like it, I, we would have been able to start a family, but not quite in the same way. Yeah, I know exactly. What and you not mean. feeling as secure and as happy. Yeah, because I know I wasn't as happy at my corporate job before, and so now it's like this feels good. Yeah. Um. So, is there anything exciting? I, McKenna, with with you, how long did you like before you um like when I met you? How long before that had you quit your corporate job? Like how long were you doing your YouTube channel? I quit my corporate job in 2017. Okay. And I didn't start my YouTube channel until 2018. Okay. I started like five other failing businesses in between then. Oh, period. Yeah. 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 You know, you had to work, th- we had to work through the Oh things. yeah. I've had many failing businesses. You yes. know, because when you're, when you have an entrepreneurial spirit, you cannot be afraid to fail. Well, do you want to know what Lone Fox originated from? It actually originated no, from my I've never failed business, that. Lost Fawn. Yeah. <laughs> Lost Fawn. A lost Fawn. So, okay. Do you do you ever remember Black Milk leggings? Do you uh, remember those yes. leggings that had the yeah. print on them? Oh yeah, they were so popular. they were so popular. This is when Black Milk was popular. I wanted to create Lost Fawn as like a cheaper version of Black Milk because remember Black Milk leggings were like two hundred dollars. But people were like, it was like a cult it was, following. People, people loved and, them, and I thought they were so cool. Like I would never wear them, but I just thought it was so cool. And so I was like, I'm gonna do printed leggings. So I found a manufacturer in China because this is literally like what I would do when I was younger. Like I was talking to China. <laughs> Just making making, the making products like 
I had multiple Etsy stores. Um, and then I ended up giving the one that was really successful to my parents, like the um, jewelry supply store, yes. which they still currently have to this day. And um, so I ended up having a legging store on Etsy called Lost Fawn. And oh the name my just God. like- I did not know that. I don't know where the name originated from. I just like put two words together and I thought it sounded cool. Yeah. And so I like bi- like did business cards and a logo and everything. And then I had the business on Etsy for like two months and was just over it after two months. I was yeah. like, nothing's selling. Like I'm over it. So I stopped. And then when I was like creating this interior channel, I was like, what can I have that's like- and I was like, I'll call it Lost Fawn. And then I was like, no, Lost Fawn is like so sad. It's so sad. I literally just kinda, changed yeah. Lost to Lone and Fawn to Fox. Like I just like swapped the words. Like and I was like, because I loved how the L and the F was like something about those. Right. And I was like, I, I'm just going to change the words. Yeah. And so that's how it came to be. Lone Cause, Fox. Because naming a, a YouTube channel is hard. Yeah. And I didn't want to like have a self name channel because I had had like five channels by this point, all named Drew Scott. I see. And there also was another Drew Scott in the industry. In interior design. Yeah. So I was like, I need to like, I, and I wanted to also, I knew I wanted to like build a brand like unrelated to me. Like I wanted it to be like a brand. Yeah. And that's why like if, 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 and when I eventually come up with my own thing, it will be named not something my name, Yeah, you know, so it will be a subset It'll be named Kinsley by Exo McKenna. Exactly. (laughs) Honestly, that's a cute brand name, Kinsley. Kinsley is a really cute brand name. there's actually a store Kinsley on La Brea. Kinsley's Corner. Oh, but that also sounds kind of like, like a cat, like David's bridal or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No. We're going to have to work yeah. on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Plato's closet, if you will. Plato's closet, <laughs> if you will. Yeah. Um, so are you working on anything really special right now? Um, that you want to tell us, anything, give us a sneak peek. Anything really special? That could be a project. Like nothing like super, super. I mean, there's some stuff behind the scenes that I actually like contractually not allowed to talk about. <laughs> Oh, I mean, you know about them. Know. Yeah, you do. <laughs> um, but other than, I mean, just working on the living room, living room. which is like the main priority, which I feel like the living room is actually going to be done in like the next couple weeks. Yeah. It's just like installing the doors is the hard part because yeah. that's w- the only thing that I need to do before I can actually start like getting all the furniture in there because yeah. now the painting's done. Um, and so, then you kind of need the doors first before you do the bookshelves. Book yes. So yeah. the doors are probably going to like, we're going to work on those this week. Yeah. Because I feel like they are doable. I, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. I know. It's just, I feel like it's just the all widths these, of them. These are all news. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, like new things that we're trying. And yeah. I feel like I go into everything kind of like procrastinating because I, I don't, I've never done it before and yeah. I don't know how. So I'm like, oh, I'll get to it. Oh, And it's also it. scary when it's like a house. Like these are functioning doors. This yeah. is not like, oh, a little DIY decor. Like yeah. they're doors that are going to like allow the elements of the world to not come in, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, no, I, I think that we we talked about his doors today, and I think I think it's totally doable. It's he got lucky on finding the perfect size. I know, I think so too. And so I think that those should. I think that they will fit in there, and then just need to add some space. Yeah, you just have to get started. Just top. put the hinges on yeah, and put exactly. them up there, and then close and it then figure and it assess. Out. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's been really, really ha- exciting and happy. I'm very happy you've been here with me today. Wait, McKenna, what are you going to work on next? Oh, at your me? House? Yeah, I want to know because like. I've seen – because you've kind of done your living room a little bit. Yeah, so – And your go, kitchen just a tiny bit. Yep. So, okay, when I left Texas – I'm actually going back to Texas next week after Easter. Um, so I'll be back there. I need to finish one upper cabinet in the kitchen. Okay. And the kitchen's completely done. It was like that one cabinet that I still needed to build and it didn't build. And then it's completely done. And then I have a few things left in the living room just trim-wise and that's going to be completely done. So the first – part of the house. Yeah, like the dining, dining living, living kitchen, kitchen golden done. The coffee bar and the pantry uh-huh. is something I want to work on. I plan on being in California for the summer because it's so hot in Texas. Yeah. The mosquitoes eat me alive with projects, so I kind of wanted to be back here. Yeah, makes you know, sense. Hang out with you the whole time. Just Duh. come over and like Well, yeah, you literally have just abandoned me for like I did two abandon- years. <laughs> And it was because it was so nice because when I, when McKenna and I first messaged each other, I was like, oh, where do you live? And she's like, I live right here. And I was like, I live one minute away from you. Like one minute. Yeah. Literally one minute. And that was just so crazy. And we would like Um, walk to each other. Yeah. All the time. And then you ended up moving away. I know. Which makes me sad that your house that you really loved was like right next to me over there. Remember? The one you didn't get because you didn't have credit. 
Oh, I know. Could it you could imagine? We could have been, been so close to each other. Literally. Right I know, street. but you want to know what? I will say that I do like that I got this house okay. more than See, that Okay, it always one. works yeah. out for the best. I'll say that I do like, like, I love this house way more than that one after the fact, after seeing that one. Even though, like, this one, in its current state right now, like, the other one was, I think, better. And, like, in the current states Home. of where they were. Yeah. But, like, this one in the end is going to be better than that one. You totally. know what I mean? Because, but that one's just, like, the outside, and this one doesn't have really any outside yet. It's all in. It's all really inside. Yeah. yeah. That one's like outside was crazy. That's what I want to do here. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's basically like you have a blank canvas out there because exactly. it's literally just concrete right now. I know. So pulling up the concrete and really bringing it to life in your own like, I want to whatever make a you workshop. Want. I want a workshop where I can cut wood and like get yes. sawdust everywhere. Yes. And not have to clean it up if I don't want to till the day and after. And just close the door. Yes, exactly. And just walk away. Yes. Yeah. That's what I do with my garage. I would love that. <laughs> just like, this is a great workshop. It's my garage. <laughs> outside perfect <laughs> yeah you know oh this is fun i know it's so fun this is actually so much fun i could do this every day that's what i'm saying yeah i have been really enjoying the podcast i enjoy just sitting down and like sharing things that we wouldn't normally share on our youtube videos because it it feels like it needs to fit inside a box and it feels like it feels so if it's like the, like the tiniest bit out of place it needs to be cut out and we like, cut it out yeah no because it feels like um i don't it just feels like if you're watching for a specific topic if you if you talk about anything else nope it's, not it's like you feel like someone's gonna stop. Someone's watching gonna stop watching, or it was like clickbait, or I don't know. Oh, like it's 100%. something. Like I don't know. It's just like not exactly. And this has been such like an effortless way for friends to sit down and just chat about mm -hmm. things we love. And we hope that you. I, I hope that you've been enjoying it. It's like we always want to hear what you want to hear. We we'll always want like if you guys want us to talk about something specific. This this episode was kind of like more of a broad like let's talk about our yeah houses. no oh my it was so much fun though yeah it's 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 easy so if you want us to talk about something specific and have Drew on that podcast I again, would love let to us oh know. my gosh yes please everyone comment below yeah comment on the YouTube channel if you're watching it because we do film this for YouTube as well so it's with my own two hands podcast if you're listening in the car <gasps> oh my gosh I forgot people can listen to this like and on a podcast thing yeah! like I forgot. I forgot. I'm just not used to it. You know, no. we've just always been filming uh -uh. with a camera. I know. You know, and we have said, if you have not, if you're listening in the car and you have not watched the YouTube channel, go watch it because you'll see the beautiful chairs that we're currently sitting in and oh, how yeah. we staged this mm -hmm. in his house because I was like, we have to do this as a backdrop. Yeah. We have to be in your kitchen. If you want to see any of the details, we'll put up pictures and stuff. It's yeah. just amazing. And of course, let us know what you want to hear on the comment section on the YouTube channel. Please let us know. He's a great singer, by the way. You didn't I know his like, hidden talent. I feel like I'm like a singing when yeah. I have this microphone here. I think these are here. singing mics. Nice. We'll see. We'll see. I just always want to plug my ear. <laughs> we'll see you guys next in Bye. two weeks. I upload an episode every other Wednesday. We'll yeah. see you guys next time. And oh let my us gosh. I this love is so much fun. You. Thanks for having me, McKenna. <laughs> Man, there's a wrap. Yay. <gasps> Bye, guys. It is no secret that I love home decor and decorating my home. And throughout the years, I've really discovered my own interior style by mood boarding, you know, rooms and homes that I love and experimenting with different styles in my own space and on the Design Home app. Through Design Home's challenges, I get to design full rooms with furniture, art, and decor in different styles and getting to pair textures, shapes, and colors together in different spaces has really helped me to feel more confident applying those ideas to my own home. You can install Design Home with the link below and get free in-app currency to play around with and explore. Plus, you can even make real-life purchases inside the app with the Design Home inspired store. Thank you to Design Home for sponsoring today's episode.